So folks, everybody likes to talk about investors losing money. I know you guys do. Blood in the streets, investors getting haircuts. You guys like to hear it. So we're going to talk to the one and only and the best investor in Fresno who is not immune to making a mistake or two. So Jason, I think we're going to talk about about $60,000 in losses. Yeah. Is that where we're going to start this conversation? Yeah, that's where we're going to start, man. Uh, it's a tough pill to swallow, but uh, it's good. We were just talking about that on the last video. I'm glad to get it done. But yeah, let's get into it, man. I'm excited to share what I learned from these things. So hopefully, uh, you know, your listeners can learn from our mistakes and not make the yeah. same ones. So let's let's peel it back. So $60,000, if I remember, it's two different deals. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, two houses that we bought uh, back in April of last year, April and May. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. April, so we're talking 11 months. We'll talk tw 12 months kind of start to finish. Yeah, we're going yeah, we're going on almost a year with these things, man. So it's been uh, uh, So Jason, I don't know if you know this, but the real estate market was a little different last year. It was. It was. <laughs> and it is this April. Lesson number 1, guys. Yeah, I, I just buying at the absolute peak of the market, right? That was uh that was the biggest thing that came up on both of these things. We just bought them uh, we bought them really high and I always run my numbers very aggressively, guys. So that's one thing that I do want you to know that there's a caveat is it wasn't at that time when I made that purchasing decision, I didn't feel like I was overpaying. I bought both of these significantly below what I thought the after repair value was, you know, one of them we're selling for 430. We bought it for 260. You know what I mean? So just on paper at that time, even now, right? Like it's like, okay, that yeah. looked good. You know, the other one, we bought a hundred thousand below what we ended up selling it for. And so, um, you know, we just bought them at, uh, at the peak and, Everything the, that could have gone wrong with both of those properties pretty much went wrong. And so, that yeah, so was, let's, let's break this down because yeah. I think people need to hear this. Yeah, so sure. when you bought them, you were conservative on your numbers, uh -huh. but were you conservative on your timeline? Cause again, you're holding these for 12 months and I'm going to guess that wasn't your plan. No, definitely not on one of them. Uh, you know, something that happens sometimes is we just got red tagged by the city. The house was in really, really bad shape. So it was, I mean, almost as soon as we closed on it, um, the property got shut down. And so it ended up taking significantly longer than what we originally planned because the city was involved from the beginning. So, you right. know, when you have to deal with plans and permits and inspections and those types of things, and it's not just a simple, straightforward cosmetic rehab, you know, that can take a four to six month timeline and turn it into 10 or 11 months where we're at now. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, okay. Was, so that's that, that one. Was, yeah. And the other one we bought, we had, with existing tenants. So we inherited oh. those tenants and yeah. they were reasonable to work with, but it just, whenever you buy stuff with tenants, guys, whether you do cash for keys or you do an eviction or you give them a notice or whatever, that's always going to add um, probably 90 days at minimum to the front yeah. of your schedule, right? I and would so, think so. That one uh, we bought with those tenants and on and that was one that I thought was going to be an Airbnb. So at the beginning, my exit strategy was different. Right. And yes. so we got the tenants out. Then we started working on it. I started buying furniture. We started making design choices based on it being a short term rental. And in the midst of us doing that, interest rates are going like this and lenders are pulling the programs that they have for short term rentals. So I see a lot of the lenders where I'm relying on refinancing. Right. And I've got to refinance it based off numbers as a short term rental. The, the, the lenders that I was using, they don't have that product anymore. Mm -hmm. So I made a decision just to flip that one and okay. we had already spent time and money designing it as an Airbnb. We shifted, you know, halfway through, uh, halfway through the flip. And by that point we had over improved the property. Plus, right. you know, it took long to get in there because of the tenants. So a yeah. little bit, two different scenarios, but both things that added, added to the timeline and the budget, which were not good. Yeah. The, the second one I want to highlight again, cause I keep highlighting for folks. There's, there's, there's a housing market, which a lot of people talk about and think about, but there's also a lending market. Yeah. The lending market, people don't watch. Sometimes lenders are nervous. Sometimes they're aggressive. Things can come. Things can go. I've seen lenders pull stuff the days of day of, of escrow, right? Yeah. It's not done till it's done. Yeah. Uh, so watch the lending market because when yeah, lenders you gotta, get scared. You, yeah, you can't take that for granted. And that's huge. We talk about all these variables when you're flipping. And if you're doing like the burst strategy, which is where I've accumulated most of my rentals, if that refinance component switches or something changes or the rates jump or whatever, right? Like your whole exit strategy could be thrown out of the window. So you got to be really careful with that. I'm curious on both of these, um, your model, generally speaking, now these could be exceptions. Uh, you leverage private money. 
during the initial hold period. Yeah, 10% on both of these, yeah. Okay. So you were paying 10%, uh, probably your standard stuff, because we've done deals, right? Six months with a six-month kicker, right? Same deal. Yep. Uh, So you paid a full year at 10%. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to do the math quickly in my head. So on the really first one on the first one, I ended up paying my lender, you know, $33,000. I mean, that's crazy, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I that's was really, that's really the loss. Yeah. And I was projecting $18,000 or $15,000 exactly. in holding costs. Right. So, yeah. you know, when we, when we run our numbers and we put everything on our spreadsheet, I was budgeting for six months. Cause I thought we'd be in and out of it in six months. I had no, I never thought we'd be holding it like back through. Now, were both of these in sure. Fresno? Because you've tightened up your buy box. Since yeah, last both year. are in Fresno. Both are okay. at the price points that, you know, that where I normally operate in. Okay. Um, it was a function of buying at the peak of what that market was and the market shifting and mm-hmm. me not anticipating how fast that market would kind of soften with the rates jumping the way that they did. Right. I knew it was going to soften, but I didn't know exactly where it was going to end up. So there was that. The other thing too, with both of these that we haven't talked about is I ended up, these would have been almost break even deals for me, but the, I had two big appraisal gaps to the tune of $55,000. One $30,000 below and one was $25,000 below. So if you look at my loss, right, we had offers that would have come in. And I, when we put them in escrow, I was like, all right, at the very bare minimum, I'm going to break even, maybe lose a few thousand bucks. I was like, thank, thank God, this is good. I'll take it. Yeah. Good to go. Right. uh, We had a, we had appraisal gaps on both, man. And so because it took so long, the comps that we had were not there when we went to sell. Uh, And so that's what, that's the other thing that kind of screwed us. Right. And so this is when you're, when you're when you're doing flips, guys, the the you want to get in and out of them quickly, not just because of like keeping your holding costs down and those things, but if you're basing it off of comps that are two or three months old, if yeah. it takes you six months to flip it, those comps are not there anymore, right? Yeah. If it takes you a year, no good. <laughs> so so yeah, it was uh again, it was really like everything that could have could have gone sideways on me did. Yeah. And, so I want to uh, talk about the second one for a minute. Yeah. Cause again, you, you had plan a for it. Airbnb ended up flipping it because the financing vanished. If you were going to go back to that one at the beginning and just make it a standard flip. Yeah. How much would you have saved? Cause again, you said you over improved, which I totally get. I mean, are we talking 5,000 bucks over probably eight or? to $10,000? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So not the, it total. wasn't, it wasn't crazy. It was just some things that we configured with the layout some things that we did with our electrical just to try to make it a little bit more fun, things like that. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. But all of that stuff adds time, right? Like when you're in there yeah. redoing everything and saying, Nope guys, let's rewire this over here and let's do this. Like the, it, yeah. it just took us way longer than it shouldn't have taken us. And if it had been a flip from the beginning, mm-hmm. we would have been in and out of that project in four to six weeks. And um, you know, that, you know, we wouldn't be in the situation. That okay. And then on the first one, I'm curious if your buy box would allow you to do it today. Because again, you said it was a really rough shape. It ended up getting red tag, which you probably thought was possible. Would you yeah. take on a monster project like that today in today's market? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. It it wasn't like it wasn't anything that we dealt with, right? There was just yeah. it was a, a a decent sized property. It was kind of like a hoarder house where there was a ton of stuff over there. Yeah. So it took a while to clean everything out. And then when, like, literally when you have the city involved from the beginning, it's like everything has to get inspected and you're stopping and everything's waiting and you're getting out of this rhythm and you're moving the contractor from a job that's paused over to another one. And then by the time they get back here and it just, all of it just adds up and it creates all these delays and different things that are going on. And yeah. All right. So you would, you would tackle that project today if it came. I would do it. I would do it. I would do it again. As long as, uh, as long as the numbers made sense, I would do it. Right. You bought it right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. What else are you seeing in the market? Because again, uh, it's wild to think about Q4, right? Specifically November, December were really slow. Yes. Uh, it was. It seemed to pick up the month I was gone, February. I, I see a lot of stuff going pending in escrow. I haven't found a deal that really made a lot of sense in, in you know, I don't know, five or six weeks. Uh, what are you seeing in the market today? Our, the market for us has definitely picked back up. So I think the positive for me is that even though we're taking those losses on those projects, we've got seven or eight other deals potentially closing this month. So March is going to be a net positive month for us. So this would be, if I'm going to take a loss like that in a month, this is the month for me to do it because I have so many other things closing that offset that. 
and we're still going to be net positive after expenses, payroll, everything. So I think I'm going to be, I'm, I'm, I feel really good about where we're at. So for yeah. us, it's been interesting to see what's been going on with um, the conversations that we're having with sellers. So many of the sellers that we've been speaking with over the last six months that would not come down from their price that were still kind of in la la land with their expectation as far as what they were going to sell for those sellers have finally come to the table. And so these mm -hmm. deals that we're doing now, at least in the, in the ones that we're in the sellers that we're working with are people that we've been talking to that realize like, Hey, I'm not going to get this astronomical price. And I think, you know, the reality for them is just kind of set in and we're, we're doing that. And I've seen not just, the rates coming down have helped with the flipping side of the business, but on the sure. wholesale side of the business, a lot of the buyers that were kind of on the sidelines for me for like, let's say Q4 that were just not buying anything, they're buying. So it's what? been interesting to see. So we've been able to get, uh, you know, the sellers that we're working with. My model right now is I don't really want to be flipping anything unless it's really easy. So yeah. everything that's coming through our pipeline is just quick, easy in and out. So, so real easy is six weeks or less. Yeah. And honestly, like if I'm closing on it, uh, I have a video that I shared with you, uh, with your channel and I, and I need to do another walkthrough cause we're an escrow on it now, but that was one where we did carpet or paint carpet and paint. We I remember that one. $12,000 just fixing everything up. I mean, it oh was yeah, I'd love crazy. to see that. Yeah, and yeah. we ended up accepting an offer that was 5,000 over asking. We had multiple offers on that one. So multiple um, offers. Are you kidding yeah, me? This is not crazy. 2021. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah so that stuff is still working. So like I'll do flips like that. Um, we'll do a lot of stuff where we can just assign while we're in escrow to mitigate our risk. I like we're selling a lot of these projects that we've been holding on our books for a while. So I kind of want to just clear everything out. And in the meantime, have transactions that can bring revenue in quickly and not things that are going to take 11 months for us to, to flip. Again. Yeah. So yeah. again, I'm trying to figure out what what's the what's the kind of top end. Are we talking six weeks is kind of the size of six weeks or less is the kind of yeah, project. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I, like, I'm not going to do like big, like anything that's going to require plan checks, permits yeah. on everything. I'm not going to do that. No, nope. so none of that. Yeah, okay. Typical carpet house. Paint. Yeah, carpet and it's, paint, or even if it's like a, even if it's like a kitchen and bath remodel, those things we can knock out pretty quickly. But things sure. that I know are going to be, you know, just long term, I just don't want to deal with it. I just don't want to okay. deal with it. Right now. Yeah. yeah. So at the end of the day, when you think about 2023, again, we're, we're in March already. Can you believe there's already two months gone of 2023? That's just bad. wild. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you, I mean, I, I'm still excited about the year that's coming. How, how about you? I feel really good because this, um, this boost in activity that we've seen the last, I'd say Feb and March for us, it's been really good for my team and I, I think mentally when you come out of like the last quarter of 2022, you know, it was hard. Was I think for everybody, you know, I think yeah. it was challenging. There's a lot of just negative noise going on. Right. And transactions for us were down. I think we had two deals in December. That's way low for our team. Right. So I think just mentally, just trying to keep everybody, um, you know, dialed in is it was, it was now we're in this space where I think the narrative and the, and everything with my team is much more positive. We're back to the same number of transactions, at least that it's we awesome. were used to doing. Yeah. So um, yeah, overall I'm excited, man. I think it's good. I think a lot of so, the opportunities that we've set ourselves up for are going to be there. Yeah. So at the end of the day, losses happen. You've been in this business for eight years. Losses are going to come. The key is to learn from them, not repeat them. Um, Jason, where can people find you? Yeah. I'm most active on, uh, on Facebook and Instagram. Those would be the two places to kind of follow along with my journey. You can also, uh, visit me on my website. It's jasonpritchard.com. All the resources, everything that my team and I use day-to-day -day in our business are up there for you guys. So just, uh, you know, any one of those places, have, feel free to reach out. Yeah. If you haven't gone to jasonpritchard.com, you're missing out. He literally gives this stuff away. I uh, Go get it now because that may not may not always be the case. Yeah, that's they're right. Free, that's they're right. free today. Free right now. There you go.